Good evening, everyone. Hello. <laughs> I need that to start off with. Um, hi, uh, my name's Son Ash. I just said it over there, but I'll go again. Uh, I'm a developer evangelist for Twilio. Uh, anybody here know what or who Twilio is? It's a couple. Oh, right, cool. yeah. All right, it means I get to tell you, uh, which excites me at least. Um, so Twilio is a, a communications platform. It's an API um, to help connect uh, your users, um, oh, sorry, it's an API for your applications to connect your users uh, via voice, uh, video, or messaging. Uh, using the tools, languages, or frameworks that you already know. Uh, that can be voice, voice calling, SMS, all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm not talking really about that uh, this evening, aside from the fact that it might crop up in a demo or two. Uh, but that's not the uh, subject of, these, of the talk. Uh, what I am talking about is uh, an introduction to service workers. Uh, and this is a, a good thing to go... Um, this, this to me is the future, but let me do a small uh, introduction to it first. Uh, the service workers are scripts, JavaScript, that intercept network requests. Uh, so that web developers can treat the network as an enhancement and provide an offline experience for users of web applications. Um, and we'll come back to this later and, and see if we still believe that at the end. Uh, but that's what I believe it is uh, right now. Um, but that's not kind of enough to tell you enough about it to want to use it or get excited about it yet. So let's, uh, let's build on that a little bit more. Uh, by going back a little bit in history, I think. Uh, because... Uh, I believe the service worker is, is very much a turning point in the web. It's a turning point in browser technology, uh, much the same as the XML HTTP request was uh, back when that first came out. Uh, and the, the nice things about service worker is it doesn't have a horrible API. It doesn't have bizarre uh, capitalization, uh, and, uh, and you know it is going to make our lives better. Uh, and it's coming as a standard to right away, straight away. Um, and you know. The XML HTTP request changed the way we could write web applications and changed the interactivity, and just changed the entire uh, field uh, for us at that point. I don't think we can imagine many interactive sites these days without the use of XML HTTP request. And so uh, I believe that in the future that's the place the service worker is going to sit as well. It's going to be, we're going to wonder how we coped without service workers. Um, it allows you to make websites work offline, is the key to it. Now, this is not the first bit of technology we've had in the browser to make websites work offline. Uh, has anybody tried to write uh, an application cache before? Uh, if you recognize this, it was a declarative <coughs> way of saying, I would like to store these files offline, and I'd like to go to the network for these things, and it was basically awful. Uh, I mean, it was, it was great for really, really simple use cases, which admittedly is all I ever built with it, uh, but it was absolutely awful for anybody that wanted to do anything complicated. <coughs> I, uh, I once saw a talk by Andrew Betts, who used to head the FT Labs, who uh, wrote the, the FT.com's uh, original kind of web app that replaced their mobile app, and the pain and the suffering that he went through in order to make it almost work offline uh, was just not uh, worth it. But at the same time, uh, Jake Archibald at Google was also uh, complaining a lot about it and saying things like this online and at talks and, uh, and, and in articles and everything. Um, uh, because it was just genuinely awful, it's lovely. The idea of having a declarative um, way of saying this is how I'd like things to work is normally uh, really positive because it's simple. It allows people to just um, just say what they want. Uh, however, in terms of this working offline, uh, it just didn't work. Uh, there were far too many edge cases and corner cases that it just fell apart. And so, uh, almost two years ago now, at the start of 2014, um, um, there's links in the slides that I'll put on later. Uh, but at the start of 2014, um, the spec was started for the service worker uh, by Alex Russell, also at Google. And him and Jake worked on that um, and gathered support and other people uh, until uh, the start of 2015, in which um, it finally dropped into the first uh, browsers for the public. So without any prefixing, without any flags behind it, the service worker arrived in 2015. Uh, in Chrome 40 and Opera 27, um, the first time we had a proper, uh, a proper way to make sites work well offline. And then, at the start of this year, uh, in Firefox 44, uh, I mean, it's good fun keeping up with these numbers these days as the browsers <laughs> just spin around them. Uh, but Firefox 44 um, brought uh, support for the service worker. Uh, and then, um, also this year, um, Samsung Internet Browser uh, version 4 uh, brought the service worker into it. Um, that might be a, a relatively unrecognized logo and a relatively <coughs> unrecognized browser, however, it's, um, it is now the default browser 
on all devices that don't explode as soon as you start them up. That's <laughs> <laughs> <I'm joking. laughs> yeah, brilliant. Um, uh, it is the default browser on Samsung Android devices, uh, so bumping Chrome out of the way, and therefore, as the default, is now becoming a significant browser mm. on mobile devices. Uh, Samsung has a fairly large chunk of the uh, um, people that use Android. Um, obviously, uh, we are missing some uh, there. Uh, we have some chance that this is going to come to other browsers. In fact, actually in Edge, uh, it is live in the preview you can run with service workers and try things out, which is kind of exciting. Uh, and then, um, you know, Safari are thinking about it. <laughs> They, I mean, they are thinking about it, and they do seem to be making positive steps towards uh, certain parts of the service worker spec. And you might think that being able to make really good web applications might put them off from uh, you know, allowing you to do that, because they have an app store which they make billions of dollars with. Uh, but they did just release Apple Pay for the web, so um, support for the browser may well come back, since it could now be a revenue stream for them. And hopefully, hopefully we can see um, some of this stuff from from Safari sometime soon. Uh, if you do uh, get excited by the things I'm about to now show you in this talk, and you know somebody at Apple, tell them to get on with it. <laughs> so what does it really do? Um, so when I say it's a script that intercepts these network requests, it's a script that runs outside of the context of the actual um, page that your site is running in. Uh, it doesn't have access to a window object. It is completely separate. Uh, and so you need to install it. You need to register it with uh, the browser uh, and have it run. And this is how you do that. Uh, you just call uh, service workers on the navigator object uh, and you register the, um, the file you want to be that service worker. You can also give it a scope uh, to say, I only want it to work on paths that start with, in this case, slash admin, if you wanted a different service worker for your admin. Um, admin section, for example. <laughs> Um, but if you don't give it a scope, then it will just work at the level that the file is at itself. So in this case, it will be at the root level and control the entire domain. Um, service workers also strongly use promises. Uh, so everything you're going to see right now uh, that happens asynchronously uh, will be in a promise and we'll have these then and catch uh, available to us. Um, notably, uh, this actual actually doesn't work that well. Uh, JavaScript support for emoji and things is not that great, <laughs> which is a real shame, because I've always wanted to log out um, the cheers emoji every time I do something good. Uh, but it doesn't work that well. Uh, yes, if the uh, service worker successfully installs, then you will uh, get a fulfilled promise. And if it fails to install for some reason, uh, then the promise will reject, and you can deal with it. Uh, what's nice about this situation is that um, because the service worker is not available everywhere, and because it is really a really good uh, version of progressive enhancement in that um, sites should never depend on the service worker working. Uh, if you do fail to install one, the site should carry on working as, you, as it would in a browser like Safari. That can't even have it. Um, and then the service worker itself goes ahead and intercepts network requests. Uh, so this is an example of what you could write uh, inside the service worker file itself. It responds to events, so you just have to listen to those events. And in this case, the fetch event is when a page makes, when your page makes a request. Whether it's to something on your own domain or uh, something on a third-party domain, it will all go through the service worker, and you can respond to that yourself. Uh, and so it is a proxy uh, for your website that, you, that you're in control of. And anybody who's kind of um, security-focused at this point might be a little bit worried about that kind of thing. Because uh, if somebody else were to take control of that proxy, you'd never see that user ever again. And you wouldn't even know about it. Uh, which is why um, Service Worker, along with a bunch of other uh, reasonably new uh, APIs in the browser, uh, require you to run on HTTPS. Uh, there is a big push to get almost the entire web onto HTTPS, which is cool because um, <coughs> security and privacy kind of matters. Um, uh, but a Service Worker will not uh, run on a domain that is not um, secure, uh, stops people getting in the way and, and capturing your users. Uh, for development purposes, it will work on localhost though, so that's okay, it's not going to break when we try and write things, and we don't have to mess about with certificates on our own laptops and things like that. Um, if you are, if you have a site and you want to try this out, and you don't have uh, HTTPS yet, then um, I recommend looking into the Let's Encrypt project, which uh, generates free uh, SSL certificates for your domains and even auto-reuse them and everything like that. So it takes all the pain of SSL away uh, and allows us to have fancy things like service workers 
uh, and other stuff that you need HTTPS for these days, like uh, geolocation and, and um, access to camera and microphone. So I wanted to show you uh, service worker action, and this is where we were trying to stretch the cable uh, to the table here. So I'm just going to turn face away from you for a second. But I'll try and talk loud enough to bounce my uh, words off the wall there, because I want to show you uh, this little site here, which is my very simple uh, offline page. Although it's not offline yet, um, as you can see in the dev tools on the right-hand side, I don't have any service workers. And if I were to um, kill this server, which is this one, uh, it would go away. That's me faking offline for the purposes of this, uh, because this is just running on my laptop. So if I went offline, it wouldn't go anywhere. Um, but now it's back. Uh, and let's put a service worker in place. Uh, cool. This is that page. It says hello digital uh, And I'm just going to add a little bit of JavaScript at the bottom um, to install the service worker, as we saw. Uh, now, you would probably, uh, if you're doing this, uh, check for the existence of the service worker uh, on the navigator object uh, so you could you know, avoid uh, getting errors in your JavaScript. Uh, but because I know which browser this is going to run in, I'm not going to do that. Cool, and so when this results, we get our registration, and I'll just be happy. Uh, not be is just happy. Uh, and then, um, uh, if we get an error, then we'll probably log that one out, because I'll have done something wrong, and that's, uh, that's not good. Uh, cool, so that is all you need to do to uh, install the, the navigator, uh, sorry, the service worker. And this is that service worker file itself. Uh, so as I said, we're going to listen for um, events, uh, and the first event uh, a service worker gets is the install event, uh, which allows you to do some stuff uh, as you install it. And this is where we can fail to install as well, because uh, if, if something goes wrong in this, uh, we can kick out and the service worker won't be registered. Um, there's a few things to know about the service worker. Uh, that is, firstly, like within the service worker file, it's called itself self, which is nice. Uh, and then, because it can be killed, it, it's a, it runs in the background, it can be killed kind of any time, because it doesn't need to take up resources the whole time. Uh, but sometimes you need it to do some stuff. And that's why you use the uh, event wait until function here, uh, which is part of um, uh, an extended API on the event object that the service worker uses. Uh, and so this uh, takes a promise as an argument, <coughs> and um, will, uh, will only allow the service worker to be killed once it's finished. Then we're going to use the um, uh, caches API, which is also part of the service worker implementation, although caches notably is available in the, uh, the page as well, so you can access it from there. Uh, we're going to open a cache, we can call it Digital Croydon, uh, and that returns a promise, as most things do, uh, and that uh, will return that cache when it resolves. Uh, and then we're going to add our files to that cache. <coughs> and we can use add all, um, which uh, does an atomic uh, operation. So uh, if one of these files fails to add, then the whole thing will fail, and we won't have an installed service worker. Because there'd be nothing like having some of your files there and some of them not available. That would be confusing. Um, and so we use add all to do that. Uh, and that also uh, returns a promise. So I need to return that uh, to event the wait until. Here I've just got the two files that I require for this application. I call it an application. Uh, it is two files. Uh, the, uh, it's my favorite single page application. It just has one page. Uh, and that's what you need to do uh, to install. Uh, if I just get rid of that for now, uh, we also need to act on the fetch event as well, because uh, it's all very well uh, popping those uh, popping those files into the cache, but we need to do something with them, uh, get them back out of the cache when we want them. Yeah. So that, for that, we use the fetch event. And again, we use a, another method on the event here, uh, which is respond with, um, which allows us to respond back to that fetch uh, with, with a file, with some HTML or with some CSS in this case. Uh, respond with takes either a response object, uh, which is also part of, um, which is kind of part of the fetch API. Uh, and you can just create a response like that. Uh, but that would be really boring, because it would replace the entire site with just the words, hello world. Um, and it also takes a, a promise, um, which will eventually res um, resolve as an event, as a response. Uh, so let's do that. Let's open up our cache again. Uh, and our cache is called that. And then, 
once we have the cache, we're going to reach inside it uh, and see if uh, the request we're making matches something with the cache. <coughs> we can get that off the event object as well. Uh, we're just going to return that. Uh, and in this particular case, I know very well that uh, there are two things that's going to be requested and two things in the cache. Uh, so that's all going to work fine. Uh, so if I go back over here, I can refresh my page, and my service worker, as you can see down here, uh, is activated and running, it says. Uh, and so what that means is I should be able to kill the server now, uh, refresh the page, and it doesn't go anywhere. Uh, in fact, uh, it's stored. It's stored in the cache right here, as we told it to. Um, cool. Uh, that worked. Uh, there it is. So that is our first service worker. We've cached some files and our site now works offline. Brilliant. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why should we do this? For me, it's one of those arguments that a little bit comes down to web versus native, sort of. It's not the big full-blown should we have apps or not ever kind of thing. But I believe that the, uh, the web is a it's a resilient platform, it's an open platform, and it's the one that we uh, need to um, defend at times. Um, and it has some benefits, uh, and it has some not quite so good things. Uh, one of its not quite so good things is that the web has always been online by default. Like, every time, uh, aside, we can forget about the application cache, it was an awful mistake. Um, but aside from that, you know, when you wanted to use a, a website, you had to be online. Uh, you have to, you know, you make a request to the browser, and the browser goes off and finds it. Even with the existence of browser caching, uh, you never really trust that when you press refresh, if you're underground, that you're going to get that page back again. Uh, so it's online by default, and that, that's it's not such a bad thing. It's, it's got it this far. Uh, but native applications, when you go and you install them from an app store, uh, or Play Store, uh, they have all the things they, can, uh, they need in order to run. They are offline by default. It's entirely possible for um, <clears throat> it's entirely possible for a native application developer to build an app that won't work without the internet connection. Uh, however, that's their fault. Uh, on the web, we couldn't we we didn't have a choice. Um, and it is uh, it is disappointing when you come across applications that you know could work without an internet connection, uh, and they they will error out and you fail or just show you something blank. The web, however has discoverability, it has the link, uh, and it has um, uh, that shareability as well. The whole thing is entirely based on these links between sites that take us around the place, um, that give you more information about things, and that open up uh, new things that you wouldn't necessarily know about. The web has discoverability, uh, and you know when you go to a website for the first time, you can just go and use <coughs> it, assuming the website doesn't say, please install the application, uh, which is the most annoying thing on the, uh, on the web right now. Uh, but you can go use it, and it's there. Um, it's that, ex I don't know if you've seen the XKCD cartoon, where they're like, what if we just had an application that downloads and runs um, uh, you know, instantly? And it's like, nope, that's the web. It just does that. Whereas native applications have an awful first use time, if you ask me, um, because you have to go through uh, the application store. You have to go through an install. Um, if you were doing something on the website, and you were like, oh, maybe the app would be better. Uh, and you finally get it installed, it won't know a thing about what you were doing on the, on the web in the first place. Uh, and so that first time use case uh, is not that great for apps. They are very good, of course, at, at returning the recurring use cases uh, once you have all the things downloaded and once you may even you know, be able to deal with offline. Um, however, this is where I think the service worker comes in uh, because it takes away this offline by default, online by default thing the web has allows us to build things that will work offline first as well. It allows us to build things that, regardless of the state of the network that the user is using, whether it's offline, flaky, or really, really fast, it's still going to be a solid uh, experience and something that uh, we can then share, then discover, uh, using the other abilities of the web, and hopefully kind of take a little bit back from uh, what native applications have made available to us. But what if you don't care about going offline? What if this is not an issue for you? Um, all your users are only ever using your site whilst plugged into a cable modem uh, at their desk. There are, there are other things I think you can get out of this. Um, repeat performance is certainly one of them. Once you've downloaded, installed a service worker and it's cached a bunch of things for you, 
then uh, no matter how fast your network connection is, getting something out of the cache is always going to be quicker. Uh, and again, it is more, uh, safe and more, uh, you're more safe in the knowledge that using the service worker is going to be there rather than the browser cache, which is uh, also you know, flaky at best. Um, there are also fallbacks. Um, no network connection is ever perfect. Uh, and the ability not to provide the existing experience that you thought you could for the user, uh, but to provide something else in place because you need the network for your actual application. Um, we can have fallbacks. And one of the best uh, examples I've seen of this was the, um, the Guardian uh, on the blog, uh, sorry, on the developer blog initially, although it might actually have rolled out uh, to more of the sites now. Uh, but if you go offline or you have a, a poor connection and, and it times out on the Guardian uh, when you're trying to load an article, uh, instead of getting, uh, you know, the, the chrome dinosaur of doom, the downosaur, that's what it's called, uh, uh, instead of getting a white page or something like that, uh, you actually get, uh, you get offered a, a crossword, which I think is an absolutely uh, a lovely experience. You know, you're offline, you can't go anywhere else on the internet right now because that's all offline too. How about a crossword whilst you wait mm. uh, and then come out of this tunnel that you're in or something like that? Um, I think it's an absolutely lovely uh, kind of fallback. Um, that the Guardian are providing there for their, for their readers. And then we get into more exciting things, where we move away from the fact that we can cache files and return uh, things to us. Um, push notifications are something that native applications have had since they started, effectively. And um, the web has not had that. Um, this is kind of one of those times where, as a, uh, an employee of Twilio, and we have an SMS API, I'd say, just send your users text messages. Uh, but that's, that's not the immersive kind of experience uh, users expect from an application. Um, I want to show you uh, my demo of this, uh, which is my, my phone plugged in over here. Um, let me get that one out. Uh, so, uh, I have uh, an application here. Uh, it is me building uh, an SMS application effectively, uh, but in the, uh, in the web. And here is my phone. Uh, also talking to that number. Um, excuse the messages from last time. Uh, and I've got this just enable push notifications kind of button at the top here, which uh, makes the call to register that I would like to do push notifications <coughs> with, this, with this application. Um, and that goes, that gives us this kind of permissions dialogue here, uh, because we don't want to be spamming people that don't want to hear from us. Uh, and notably, as part of an experience, you should have some kind of thing that asks for notifications to be enabled, as opposed to just like on the first load of a page go, hey, can I send you notifications? Because that's going to send users right away. Um, however, I'm going to allow that. There we go. Uh, and now if I um, close that, because that's the important thing, we're now not on that website. Um, uh, in any of these, I, that's the only tab I have uh, for this browser available. Uh, and if I just type out Send that, then what we should see uh, is a little push notification of if my internet's working any good at all. We're not going to see it, are we? We're going to fail on the RP. All right, fine. Um, we're going to bring the website back and I'm going to uh, make a push notification happen uh, because we can't trust demos, uh, but we can trust dev tools, right? Mm -hmm. So the text came through, sadly. Mm. Uh, if, I, if I generate another push notification right now, that is what should have happened. I'll get out of the way. We got a little uh, notification up in the uh, top right of the screen. Uh, has the information about my text that came in. Uh, it would work if it worked. Um, I did not have time to test this when I was <coughs> uh, And we can click on that, and it will bring the page to, uh, to, to focus. Um, it would have worked if you're not on the site, and that's the key thing here. We've actually had a notification API in browsers for uh, three or four years. Uh, I mean, Edge only just released it, but uh, the notification API has been available in the browser, but that still required you to be on a tab with a site live in it in order to play it. Um, service workers allow you to send those or receive those push notifications and make a notification happen uh, when you are no longer browsing the site uh, that is sending you that notification. And that's its kind of exciting point there. This one has slightly less good support than the Service Worker and Cache API, uh, as it only arrived in Chrome 42, although that's still from April last year, so that's pretty solid now. Uh, it did arrive in Chrome 44, Opera 37, and Samsung Internet has, uh, has support for it as well. 
Um, as I said, uh, you know, don't in instantly show users, do you want push notifications, because that's going to put them right off. Uh, also, obviously, don't just send them push notifications about complete rubbish, uh, because they will leave. They will, um, uh, they, will, they will cancel your ability to send push notifications. What's quite funny, if I just make that do it again, um, is right here in the, in the, in the bottom of the uh, notification here is a little uh, settings cog, which allows the user to go straight to uh, the settings and cancel all your ability to send them notifications right there and then in the mm -hmm. notification itself. Uh, the Firefox has uh, the same. Um, in fact, it's even easier in Firefox to cancel them. Uh, so, uh, with great power comes great responsibility. Don't piss your users off. Background sync is a demo that's going to work, I promise you. Uh, and it's, uh, this is one I'm really excited about as well, because uh, this allows us to register for, if we're offline, uh, to register for an event when we come back online, and then do the stuff that we were trying to do whilst offline. So if you were trying to send a message, post something, uh, it's, it's normally kind of post requests, and it works really well in my um, SMS application here. If you've gone offline but you still want to send that message, and you don't want to worry about coming back and checking that it's sent every time, then we can use background sync for that. And let's see the demo there. Um, so I'm going to bring my phone into uh, that being here. That's there. I'm just going to turn the Wi-Fi off now. That's the uh, gold idea at this point. Um, so we have no internet connection. And I'm just going to say hello from offline. And I send that. And that's my poor notification at the bottom, but that says message sent. And it could be a better interface. I'm no designer, I promise you. Uh, what's happened is uh, I've actually popped this into um, IndexedDB here. Uh, and this is that message that I was trying to send. Uh, let's just make that full screen for a second. Uh, and we can see uh, it says hello from offline and it says I want to send it to this phone number. So that's been popped into IndexedDB, uh, waiting for the thing to come back online and the service worker to get back involved and make this happen. Uh, so I'm just going to shrink that down again. Uh, bring the phone here, that's here, and bring ourselves back online, and hopefully get on my network. Yeah. All right, and now the service worker should wake up and go, hey, I'm online. Uh, I'm going to go see what's in index DB, and, uh, and, and send that message out. Uh, and it goes and remakes the Ajax request that I would have made in the first place, and we got the hello from offline message come through. So I told you this demo was going to work. Um, and if we were to go and refresh, uh, if we were to go refresh our index DB, we find mm, it doesn't work quite that well. If we go back into index DB, we'll find that we now have no rows in there. There's nothing left in the uh, in the database because it's been taken out and discarded. Uh, obviously, there's a, a few um, <coughs> interface things that could be better done there. So I could I should be showing the message and maybe a, a sending kind of notification. Maybe even have an outbox and a way to notify users of errors in case the message doesn't get through. Uh, but like I said, I'm not a designer, and I don't know how to design any of that. Uh, I just built the feature. Um, but background sync, I'm, I'm really excited about because it does just make, um, make things effortless when in, uh, in periods of poor connectivity. You just, you don't get failures, you don't, get, you don't have to recover from those failures as a, as a developer. You just um, store it up and then send it off when you know you're online. Uh, sadly, its support is the most lacking of all of the features uh, that I'm going to talk about, save for the next one, um, because it's only been available in Chrome uh, and since version 49. I want to see this in more browsers because I think it's super useful <coughs> for developers all over the world. This is the last one, geofencing. I love the idea that a service worker can wake up and, and respond to a, uh, an event when you uh, go into a particular kind of um, sphere of, not sphere, you know what I mean, radius, geo radius, uh, an area a geofence. Uh, however, there was a bit of excitement talking about this around summer last year, uh, and the specs have all gone quiet, and there's nobody really talking about it anymore. So uh, I'm hopeful that we can make uh, a reactive um, a kind of applications work based on, on moving about and, and GPS uh, in the browser, uh, but uh, not too many other people are interested in that right now, apparently. And this brings us all on uh, eventually to the idea of progressive web apps. And this is a, a phrase that uh, Google is doing a lot of pushing at for right now. Uh, what it basically means is, um, well you need three, three things basically. A service worker, which implies you're in a secure domain. Uh, and a service worker that gives some kind of offline 
uh, experience. It doesn't. It can just be a fallback. It doesn't have to be the full app, but it, it does need to give an experience. Uh, a manifest file, which lists things like the short name for your application uh, and uh, some logos and things like that. And then finally, some user engagement. Now, this is a hand-wavy term uh, because the browsers are still waving their hands about it. Uh, they are deciding and they keep changing uh, what this user engagement means. Uh, sometimes it's, uh, you know, use the same app in, within uh, twice within five minutes uh, or return to it the next day, that kind of thing. Um, they'll work on that. We'll just need to, we just need to build apps that users want to engage with. When you have all of those three things, with that user engagement, eventually you get an app install banner. Super exciting, right? Um, what this uh, is, is the replacement for um, the uh, genuinely difficult way to get a website saved to somebody's phone uh, home screen, for example. Uh, the idea is, once you get that user engagement, you have the other things in place, uh, the banner comes up at the bottom to say, hey, you're using this app. Do you want to keep using it? And do you want to make it a little bit more easy for you to use? And you add it to the home screen, and it becomes uh, as if it's part of the... Um, as if it's part of your, the apps on your phone. Um, and then uh, you get right, that icon on the home screen. Marketing departments around the world celebrate, uh, delighted. And you don't even have to build an app for it. And then, you know, eventually profit, right? <laughs> uh, I, I guess. Um, or you just get that. You get to keep users coming back. It's great for re-engagement. It's great for, you know, you being uh, there. If you've built an app that you think users will use over and over again, then you want it to be at their, uh, at their fingertips. And then having to go through the old kind of bookmarking ways of getting an app onto a home screen uh, is just awkward. So that little banner that can come up and, and get users engaged at that point uh, is, super, is much more interesting. Uh, and that, that works, I believe, on, on Chrome and on Opera mobile uh, right now. Probably on Samsung internet as well. Um, so that's service workers. Um, they are an enhancement. I, I, I would like to continue to bang on about this. They're a huge enhancement to the web, but things shouldn't break if they're not there, um, especially because they are not yet in Edge or in Safari. And yes, but if I go back to that first thing that I was saying, actually, um, they are service workers of these scripts that intercept network requests. Uh, so the web developers can treat the network enhancement and provi provide an offline experience for user web applications. But we pr I think we've proved more that it's more than that right now. One, it doesn't matter necessarily that users are going to be offline. We're not there to provide offline experiences. We're there to provide our application in all, uh, in all ways and all manners that it can be used, in all network uh, connectivity kind of potentialities. Uh, as well as uh, being able to send them push notifications, being able to allow them to uh, use background sync to, to just get on with their day rather than worry about whether uh, they were connected or not. And in reality, I believe that service workers allow us to provide better experiences for our, for our users. They allow us to build better applications that are more resilient uh, and um, just make our users happier. Um, and in the future, as I said, I think we'll wonder how we coped without service workers. Uh, and if you're not yet convinced by all of what I've said and what I've demoed or partially demoed, let's forget that SMS one, push notification one, uh, I have one little uh, video that I'd like to show you. And uh, uh, this is what happens when I think you allow a bunch of Americans at uh, and stuff. Um, and I wonder what kind of volume we're going to get. Okay, we're going to come from the TV. Is that going to play volume? We'll see about that in a second. There we go. For too long, users have been left staring at a white screen. For too long, they've been let down by the cruel seas of network connectivity. And for too long, we've been powerless to help. We've been left waiting. But no longer, a new browser feature has arrived. And all new browser features should be advertised like this. A full game changer. Maybe not all game changer. <clears throat> the feature that lets you control the network rather than letting the network control you. Who is this new feature? And what promises does it bring to it? <laughs> the 
as service worker. <laughs> so that is the service worker. Thank you very much for listening to this evening. Thank you. Um, we're not going to take any questions, but we're going to have a break. So if you have questions for Phil, um, direct them at him. So now there's pizza. We have five pizza. minutes, and um, mm -hmm. that's a lot of time. You just have to have some more drinks.